Greetings YouTube, Sega Zombie here and welcome to another Sega Wall Lockdown Isolation Special. I've taken a bit of a break guys, to be honest, it's been tough, you know, I'm finding the third week tough, it's not easy, um, I'm sure we're all starting to get a bit of cabin fever set in and also the prospect of us being in lockdown for a lot longer you know that's starting to dawn on many of us now and um, thank the lord for for technology that's all i can say with um being able to video chat and you know whatsapp groups and and facebook groups and the like keeps us all pretty active but yeah it's lonely times it really is and um it, it has been challenging I've tried to take a little step back. I've played a lot more games. Um, I've been playing on the Switch loads, which I think I might do a video on that. Um, it's not really where I go, you know, the modern stuff, but I've really been having a blast on the Switch. And some games, you know, you go into the eShop and things like that on um, the Switch, and it's all very daunting. There's a lot of games there. There's uh, so many games, so perhaps I might be able to point a few games that I've really enjoyed playing. They'll all be retro-inspired, guys. No fear of that. Um, yeah. So, where do we begin? Well, we begin as we do in all of these videos. And we're going to go to our shout-outs. And the shout-outs today is the first guy. He's a brand new YouTuber. He's literally only just started in the last week or so. And um, he's known a lot in comments as JW with an N64 um, profile. He comments on all of my videos, loads of my videos. And I found out and discovered that he has set up his own YouTube channel. And that is Flashback TNT. He's been very active over the last few days. He's posted three or four videos up. He's got one hell of an N64 collection. Even though the Nintendo 64 is far from my favourite console, um, it's very impressive, a really impressive collection. He also speaks very passionately about um, his Amiga collection, which is is awesome. And yeah, he's, he's very similar to myself. He likes to talk about the nostalgia, and just have a general chit chat and waffle about the games, which to me is, is what it's all about for me. So really, really enjoying your content so far, Jay. So there's a, there's a shout out, some new content guys, go and check out Flashback TNT, go and subscribe. All, all shout outs as normal will be in the description below. So yeah, there we go to a brand new YouTuber and then we're going to go with someone that's reset up a new channel that has been around on the tubes for years. I've watched this guy for years. And he is a big community player as well. He gets involved with all the events and meetups and the like. And um, that is Daz, Cajonas Deloro 2.0. And I was shocked as many of the community was when um, Daz closed down his channel because the history and and all the content there was, was crazy. And um, he come back as a floating head with his waffle. Which I was really enjoying that, Daz. That was really good. I do hope you bring that back. You said in um, Dane's to stream that that was going to come back. I hope you do in some in some way. Bring that back. A great idea. But yeah, go and check out Cajonas Deloro 2.0. I hope I'm saying that right, Daz, because <laughs> none of us can pronounce it very well. Um, but yeah, great guy. Loads of content. Really changes up his collection. He goes mad, and he says it himself. He'll go 150% into a collection, and then as soon as he loses that, he sells it all up and starts something else. At the moment, he's really into his PC Engine. Modern Game Boy, um, Game Boys and Game Boy Advances, um, which really interested me. Um, the Game Boy Advance modded like that looks absolutely fantastic. I'm very tempted. And, um, yeah, arcade one-ups. So go and check out... Daz's channel and then finally the gentleman of YouTube and a really lovely guy and his passions his passion is the same as mine but he's gone down a very different path I know he has a lot of fondness for the Mega Drive 
and Sega in general, but his real love is Nintendo. And um, he collects um, NTSC um, American Super Nintendo games. He's got one hell of a collection, and I'm sure you all know who I'm talking about, and that's Cyber Snake 7J. Absolutely fantastic. He's been around on the tubes for years, but he deserves a shout out. Channels big and small, I'm going to shout them out because these are all the channels that I am close to, that I follow, that I really enjoy their content. Always buzzing when I see a notification pop up that they've posted up some new content. I hope I bring all of you guys some new subscribers and, and everyone, you know, plenty to watch. We've got to keep these minds active. We've got to have something else to focus on rather than bog roll supermarkets and this this bloody coronavirus we really have and i just hope that there's free channels for you guys to check out and hopefully i'm introdu introducing something new i'm waffling a bit guys i really am like i said it's been a tough tough week this week it really has um so apologies that there's not been a daily video Really wanted to keep up the daily video, but I will do them as regularly as I can, guys. I really will. As you may have noticed, looking in the background here, today we are focusing on the Sinclair Spectrum. Now, this is a daunting one to focus on. I did start late last year some Spectrum videos um, show, showcasing some of the real nostalgic games to me. It's going to be no different here. Like I said, we're sticking to the same format. I'm going to pick five games that are really nostalgic to me. But first, let's take a closer look, guys. guys there's what I've got in my spectrum collection so far still an awful lot I want to add I still haven't got all of the most nostalgic games to me and the games I had as a child and like I said it, the spectrum is daunting just like the Amiga if not more so on the Sinclair spectrum because the library is mental I don't know if there's an actual official figure of how many games were released but there's an awful lot and all of us that grew up in the 80s, you know, we all had vast libraries of Spectrum games, whether they were originals or on tape, and because they were so cheap and so, so easy to obtain, they were in your local newsagent, corner shop, everywhere seemed to sell a Specky game. And I'm going to focus on five guys, and um, I'm going to try and pick different ones to what I've already showcased in videos. Go and, by all means, go and look at my video library. Go and check out my other specy games. But I'm going to try and focus on five nostalgic games that I've not touched on before. And that have got a story to tell with them. Whoa! And what a tough decision, guys. It really was hard. Because there is so much nostalgia with these games. But like what I've said in previous Spectrum videos, I'm trying to avoid those titles. And, um... And, and pick five more, take the opportunity to pick five more nostalgic games, but I've got to mention Death Chase, 3D Death Chase. This, the first ever home computer console game I ever played. You know, up until this time, I'd only ever experienced cocktails in social clubs and pubs and, and arcades when going to the seaside. So, you know, up until then, I think I may have had some of these tabletop sort of LED LCD games and things like that. But to see a computer and to come home and see 3D Death Chase was amazing, guys. So I'm going to give this a mention, but I have talked about Death Chase a lot in other videos. Also, we've got the ultimate play the game games. You know, as with many specky collectors and lovers, 
they're going to be fond memories of, of Ultimate Play the game. And Attic Attack, the first game I finished ever. You know, it was the first game I actually finished. And, and I remember me, my mum and my uncle that lived with us at the time when I was growing up adored that game we played it loads but i've picked five more games guys so many i can mention so many of the sega titles when i discovered sega as soon as i saw the sega logo i bought that game and even though there's loads of memories there not all of them are good memories or fond memories if i'm being honest but some of them are some of those games i used my imagination dreamed they were the arcade games and yeah loved it and um, that's the fondness of the spectrum. When you're that young, you, you used your imagination to fill in the blanks of the games. And a lot of what sold you the game, and I know this has been mentioned by others, is the fantastic box art. And that's kind of been lost today, I believe, with modern games. Is Yeah, they're just all photoshopped, either computer generated or, or realistic pictures, not hand-drawn art. And it doesn't have that depth and that imagination that used to capture you back then. And a prime example is this game, Ninja on Entertainment USA. I can remember every day going into my local corner shop, picking this game out, thinking, I have got to get this game. How cool is that? A kid growing up in the 80s, ninjas were the coolest thing in the world. This game looks so amazing. Just by the cover art that I had to get this game, and when I got it, boy was I disappointed. You know, it, it's not a great game, but it was the box art, and a lot of these games are the same. Um, so yeah, I'm waffling again, guys. Let's, let's delve into the five. And first up, we've got a Sega title, and that is Tapper. Um, a lot of these early games are Bally Midway games, and Sega was such a powerhouse in the arcades, I believe. They were the distributors of a lot of arcade cabinets in the early years. Definitely in sort of like the late 70s, early 80s. Nintendo Arcade has um, chatted to me about, you know, Sega helped distribute a lot of Nintendo's early arcades. And I think it was the same with Bally Midway. And um, yeah, Tapper, a great arcade game. A, a holy grail item, actually, that I'd love to own in the collection is a Tapper Arcade, I really would. And so many memories of this game, not just from my family, um, but many families, you know, close friends to my parents, they played this game. And um, my friends and their family played this game, and my mum adored this game. And it's going to be a sort of like, rock because I was so young back then, you know, a lot of the games I got to experience and play were the choices of my parents. And and Tapper is one of those games, but a great game, a really great, simple arcade game where basically you're serving up root beer, which was in the original arcade. It's Mountain Dew in, in this version, I believe. It says it on the back, or it might be Pepsi. It's definitely a soda drink. Um, but the arcade was Root Beer Tapper. And yeah, you just basically have to serve the drinks before the um, customers get to the end of the bar. You slide them down. And then when they're finished, they will slide those drinks back to you. The empty glasses back to you. You've got to catch them before they fall off the edge. Serve up another drink. You can collect a bonus heart, which will get the girls doing the can-can <laughs> on stage. Loads of lovely little environments, a great game. The mini game's cool as well. You get someone up that shakes the um, soda cans and you've got to pick the one can that's not show, um, been shaken up. And yeah, a great game is Tapper. Really, really good. And a game that reminds me of one of my early friends, you know, when I was first in, um, allowed to stay around a mate's house and... Um, yeah, he would sleep over mine, I'd sleep over his. He had a Spectrum like I did. And this was a game that I always wanted to play at his because I never owned it myself. And that's Percy the Potty Pigeon. Gremlin graphics game. Again, an early game, I believe, on the Specky. But a great game. A really playable game. You play Potty Pigeon, Percy. 
and you just walk along the really colourful environments, picking up worms and avoiding the obstacles. Typical Spectrum Flare uh, fair this game, but a really, really nice game. Loads of memories, like I say, of sleeping over a mates for the first time and playing some Specky and Potty Pigeon. What a game. Another game that comes with loads of memories. Not of them all good. Um, well, the game was, but um, the memory wasn't. I can remember I suffered with whooping cough. Because back then, um, a lot of parents weren't getting their kids vaccinated because there was a scare about the whooping cough vaccine. And um, I can remember I, I caught whooping cough really bad as a child. Had a number of weeks off school. I can just remember that I felt rough. I can't remember much else. But I can remember my mum playing this game. And that's Underworld. A quality um, platform adventure game, this. Um, before the isometric sort of style games, I do believe this is like a spiritual sort of successor to Attic Attack. Um, but instead of it being top down, it's more of a side, a side scrolling affair. And he floats around shooting bubbles, similar sort of enemies and sprites to Attic Attack. Um, in glorious condition, this for the age. Really proud to have that in the collection. I'd love to have all of the Ultimate Play the Game big box releases like this. One day, hopefully I will have them all. Um, but a great game, loads of memories. I remember being extremely poorly watching my mum play this game and just being amazed watching her play this and a game that she finished. And I remember being so pleased because this is a challenging game. So yeah, loads of fond memories of Underworld. And then going sort of like on a few a few more years, I suppose, and onto the games that I played when I was that much older. Um, I haven't got the original releases of these. It's something that, again, I'd like to add to the collection, but I've been focusing on the Hit Squads. So I have the Hit Squad releases, and that's Robocop. This game absolutely blew me away on the Spectrum. One of my favourite ports of Robocop, one of my favourite games on the Spectrum, the memories of this game. Just it loading up, hearing that sampled speech at the start of the game. Truly fantastic game, Robocop. I know most of us that are into the 8-bit micros will know of this game. A hugely popular game that sold a lot of copies and made Ocean the powerhouse that they became. It really did. Um, and then that's followed by another massive game. I've chose this one. It's, it's hard. Each day my opinion will change. What is the best Renegade? Is it the original? Is it Target Renegade? Today it's Target Renegade. And both are so nostalgic to me. And playing Target Renegade with a mate. And again the memories come flooding back. Because this is a game that all my friends owned. My mate Zach who I often mention in videos. He had an Amstrad. He had it on that. Another really good mate of mine, Adam, he had the Commodore 64. And guess what? He had this on the Commodore 64. And I had the Specky port. And the hours that me and my mates played this game. Every time me and my mates, you know, hung out. This was a two-player game that we always went to. Target Renegade. Feels such an English game as well. I think I've mentioned this in videos. A side scroll and beat them up that feels British, it really does. And um, it's such a quality game. Plays superbly. Just what a sequel needed from the original Renegade. We're not going to mention the third one, that does not exist. <laughs> um, but yeah, Target Renegade. Absolutely awesome memories of that. So there's five games, guys. Let me know in comments. No, it's a tough question to ask. Five real nostalgic games that you've got on the Specky. And let's get playing some games, guys. I'll see you in a moment. And what's so important with the nostalgia with the Specky, especially, is these um, loading screens. Absolute. And, and the sound of, of the game loading, the data loading into the computer. And yeah, the amazing art and um, loading screens. So many memories. Gives me goosebumps, guys, seeing these 
these load in. And um, yeah, just wanted to share that with you. First game up is Percy the Potty Pigeon. And here we go, guys. Here's Percy the Potty Pigeon. Press enter to start. As I said earlier, great colours and use of them for the specky. A very colourful game. You've just got to collect the worms, avoid and everything, and getting them back to the nest. Whee! As you can see, you've got an energy bar there that will replenish when you stop flying. Let's see how far we can get. The memories of this game, playing this with my good old friend Gary when we were just wee little nippers. Oh, there's a worm down there. Can I get it? Three lives. I think the... What does the bee does? Does that kill you or does it do something else? I can't remember. So we need to walk here out for the helicopter a rather small helicopter I might add Whoa. I have no idea what killed me there probably ran out of energy I weren't paying attention guys but yeah what's your memories of Percy the potty pigeon have you played this game let the energy build up a little bit I think Gonna land it again. Have I lost it? So why did I lose? The worm. Gotta get back guys. Oh, the bird just nicked it. Gets a bit challenging this. <laughs> Ooh. His old gremlin graphics where the game was made. Right, let's see if I can get back to that nest. Avoiding the bee. And he's got it. I think I might have just kamikaze into the tree. Maybe let my energy build up a little bit. So yeah, the, the birds will nick the worm. There's another one right in the road there next to the castle. Yoey! Oh! Splattered! But yeah, I want to know if you grew up with Percy the Potty Pigeon. Such a great little game, this. So many fond memories. Come on, let's get this worm. Avoid the bee and the flowers. Avoid the miniature helicopter. That bee is a pain. And we got it back. Let's land on the old bird table, get some energy back. See if we can get to another screen. What's next? Oh, some more houses there. Watch out for the road. The bee is the fastest moving thing. It's a nightmare. Watch out for the helicopter. And we got that bird in. Oh, and I ran out of energy. Great little tune. There's Potty Pigeon, guys. Great, awesome game. Oh, warm memories of that one. Oh, what a load and screen. This film is in my top 10. It definitely is. Robocop is in my top 10 of all films. I absolutely adore this film. And I absolutely adore this game. What a movie tie-in this is. And that that one screenshot there that one load and screen 
brings back so much. A great load and screen too. Awesome. Oh, here we go, guys. We want two for Sinclair, and let's listen to that sampled speech. Oh, the memories. I hope you guys can hear that. And here we go. The amazing Robocop. Oh. See how far we can get. As a kid, I could get all the way through this game. As an adult, probably not. The sound's coming through really quiet. Apologies for that. Taking some fire there. I'm out of bullets. This isn't good. soundtrack goosebumps guys genuine goosebumps playing this game oh I need that baby food restore a little bit of health oh I forgot I've got the more powerful bullets Lovely detailed graphics. Yeah, it's in black and white, but so what? That's the charm of the Specky. I'm going to die, guys. <laughs> I'm going to blame the, the Navigator Conics um, joystick, I think. Not the best joystick for this game. What's your memories of this game? I know most of you growing up on the 8-bit micros will have memories of this game. It's an absolute classic. I featured it on my Amiga lockdown special, which I know in comments, guys, loads of you are wanting another Amiga video. That will be coming. It's just that I'm keeping these off the cuff. What I'm playing at the moment is what we're going to be focusing on. And the Amiga, wow, there's so many games I want to show on there. But on that video, I said that I preferred the Specky version, and I do. I absolutely adore this version. It's a slower pace game. I think the Amiga version was more true to the arcade than this port, but I absolutely adore this port. Another, another cab I'd love to own, actually, is the Data East. I think it's Date East, wasn't it? Robocop cab, oh, that'd be amazing. Or just a jammer to have it in. I believe it's a jammer cab. Getting a little bit further, aren't we, guys? need to I definitely need to own the big box release of Robocop would love to get it with the poster and here we go the famous scene from the movie got to try and not hit the girl and we got him 
restores our energy for the second level. Trying to go a little conservative on the old bullets. Is this the motorbikes with the traffic light? It is. Oh. Just in awe, guys. Sorry that I keep going quiet and just love this game. Freeway. No, it's not. Don't think the freeway's in this game, actually. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Just love the detail to this, the backdrops as well. It just captures the movie, I think. I really think this game captures it. Robocop. Here we have another little bonus stage. Again, in the, taken from the movie, the photo ID part. And we've got to match that face up, guys. go for that one. I don't think it's right though. Something's wrong. Ah! We go again. So it's that hair. I think it's that chin. Nose is, it's the nose that gets me. I'll go for that and that. What's wrong? Something's wrong here. <laughs> what am I doing wrong, guys? I can't remember. Is there another button I've got to push? And that's the end because I couldn't figure out how to do the photo ID. <laughs> but there's Robocop, guys. What a game. What a, an, an awesome game. And um, let's move on to the next one. And here we've got Tapper and another such nostalgic like they all are loading screen. Lovely loading screen that really captures the box art of the game. 
a glorious arcade game this and a really good conversion on the specy. Good on all the 8-bit computers that I played on. I remember fondly playing this on the Commodore 64 too. But yeah, Tapper, the official arcade game. That's my next choice, guys. Let's get into some Tapper, guys. See if I can... See, Robocop's volume really was poor. This one's really good. Just promising, gutted that um, the Robocop music was really low. I'm not quite sure what that is. Comments down below, guys. Well, I'm having issues with the sound on the specy, especially with Robocop. S to start, I for instructions, P for one to two players, skill level, alter controls. So we'll go to C, alter controls. J for joystick. Sinclair. Enter. S to start. Press any key, zombie. So we just got to get the drinks to the customers. Starts off really easy, but gets hard. There's a bit of sprite clash here, which can go against you knowing the number. A punt as you've got a serve. Oh no. And we've got a smash glass. That's a life down. See if we can step this up a bit. What's your memories of Tapper? Did you play this in the arcade? What computer conversion of Tapper did you play? So we've got to concentrate here. See which ones get shook. Right, I think I know which one I've got to watch. Right, I think it's the third one on the left. And it is. <laughs> and it is Pepsi. The shots on the back was Mountain Dew, so that must have been for a different port of this. We're now in a garden bar by the looks of it. when the glasses come flying back that it gets tricky. I think I'm going to collect them first. Such an addictive game and fond, fond memories of this playing it with my mum. She had a lot of time for this game back in the day. Like I mentioned, a lot of families that we knew all had this game and would play this game a lot. Nice and competitive as well, trying to get as far as you can. I think I'm going to get got nine. It's getting hard now. Oh, that was close. They're coming thick and fast. Is that it? Oh, they're holding off. And finally, would like to get a heart just to show you guys that. It's 
get some of these glasses. Oh no, that's going to smash. <laughs> Yeah, not the greatest looking port of um, Tapper on the 8 bits, but the memories are fond. So much nostalgia with this. Glasses are coming thick and fast now. Oh, but there's Tapper, guys. And um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I think we might touch on the Spectrum again. I'm trying to line up getting um, the Sega Saturn and Dreamcast set up, guys. Having a few issues with that at the moment. Just um, trying to get the, the rest of the Sega pad sorted. So I'm Sega Zombie. Until the next time, guys, goodbye. <laughs>